start the recording. So, welcome everybody. This is a little like um, talking into the dark at the moment. So, I'm hoping that we've got lots of people who are interested in finding out more about the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative. And as you can see from my slides here, I'm going to show you some uh, information about that initiative. And um, the slides were prepared by the president of Uni Collaboration, Sarah Guth, and I have remixed them for today's session. So virtual exchange is uh, sometimes known as telecollaboration. Some of you may be aware of it as COIL, C-O-I-L, or other acronyms such as CMC, Computer Mediated Communication, or OIE, Online Intercultural Exchange. Um, all of those things I know will be familiar to some of you, certainly to Marion, who I saw was presenting just now, and to Billy and uh, others of you who are there. And there's a little virtual wave here for me because it's great to follow through Twitter just going on over there. Good to um, have the community. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you, but that was a, a teaching clash, unfortunately. So thanks very much, Elon, uh, 19 and uh, Alessia and your team for letting me uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, virtual exchange and share with you some of the opportunities because virtual exchange was born in computer assisted language learning and computer mediated communication. So this is uh, an initiative that is going interdisciplinary that actually was born in language uh, teaching and learning and is very much at the heart of what many of you have been doing for uh, quite a while. So I would like to uh, get us engaged in some virtual exchange just very briefly. I know there are many of you out there who are on Twitter. I know as well many of you are used to multimodal communication and are happy to um, both have me droning on in the background with some slides and be interacting uh, with a document. So what I've done is put a couple of tasks together and I'll return to this document towards the end of the session and we'll see just how present you are online uh, because virtual exchange is really all about interaction and it would be great to see what back channel we've got going on at eLearn 19 and just how comfortable we are with interacting in the open as well uh, and uh, crossing geographic borders, crossing the borders between the formal and the informal as well, getting through some of the boundaries and the barriers uh, that sometimes separate us from talking to each other. Right, so I will leave you to um, either scan that QR code to get to the Google document or to use that bit.ly shortcut. You can use either way to get there. If you've got a mobile phone, you've got a QR reader, you can uh, easily get to that document. And otherwise you can type it into a browser if you've got uh, something in front of you for that. Um, or take a look at my Twitter feed and you'll see that I am at Warwick Language and you'll see uh, what's going on there and you'll be able to find that document. So I'm just hovering in the document at the moment to see who gets there first. So a little bit of a little competitive element, let's just see. The first task I'm asking you to get involved in is either on Twitter, Twitter or Instagram, use the eLearn19 hashtag and the hashtag, all one word, virtual exchange, to say hello. Um, you might be able to follow perhaps on Twitter at Evolve Erasmus, at Evolve underscore Erasmus, or at Uni Collaborate. Share a selfie. Let's actually see you and see the room. And then I won't be talking into the dark because I'll start to feel the presence of you guys online. Okay, I'm going to leave that up just for a few more minutes because I'd like to the comforting reassurance of actually seeing some anonymous animals arrive in that Google Doc. And I'll also copy the link and pop it into the chat uh, so that it's available there. 
there we go so there's a longer link in the text chat um, which I think actually um, was going to be shared through the eLearn um, account the, the um, Twitter account as well so what is virtual exchange oh excellent I've got my first thanks thanks very much Kelly I've got my first insight into the fact that actually I am talking to a room I can see that I'm up there thank you very much and you can hear me Sarah that's great lovely right I shall push on so it's great to have that reassurance and Twitter's a great community for that so what is virtual exchange so here's the definition and this is a definition where we as a consortium, so that's those working with uh, the European Union uh, in Virtual Exchange Initiative, and also those of us working on the Evolve project, and more about both of those uh, shortly, um, got together to look at how virtual exchange is enacted in lots of different uh, contexts, social justice contexts as well as language learning contexts and um, to look at what it can offer us and as you can see here it's very much about sustained technology enabled people to people dialogues. So this is not about talking to bots, it's not about uh, interacting with uh, voice software for example this is about people talking to real people and making those very important relationships that actually in a, a supportive and a supported way can help us to better understand each other and prepare us perhaps for physical exchange if we're thinking about traveling to a country or being part of or maybe even being educated in a country where uh, the culture is very different perhaps uh, from the one that we're used to so it can help support that it can also help support the dialogues between um, either side of the Mediterranean um, where perhaps we've got uh, opportunities um, to connect and better understand each other and certainly that is a concern of the European Union uh, social cohesion and mutual empathy and understanding so what is Erasmus plus virtual exchange well this is a pilot the European Commission established in 2018 um, we've recently uh, had a renewal of that so uh, it's a substantial amount of money being invested um, by the EU in developing programs of virtual exchange and uh, making virtual exchange as an aspect of uh, internationalization more accessible to those people who perhaps cannot access traditional physical mobility um, so an accessible way for young people in Europe and the South Mediterranean to engage in meaningful intercultural experiences online as part of either their formal or non-formal um, uh, education so this appears in lots of different ways it appears in higher education and obviously that's my focus at the moment but it also appears through youth work it appears in areas as I say of social justice um, so we're looking at really making a difference to the use of virtual exchange rather than as you know for a, a long period of time these sorts of activities have been going on largely um, unsupported by institutions um, and therefore that limits their reach and perhaps limits some of the impact that they could possibly have so a significant um, improvement in the sort of access that we can offer people in terms of accessing uh, virtual exchange and if you're in that document now and I can see several of you are you can see there are links there to the hub provided by the EU to virtual exchange um, that communicates this to young people and you can also see the link to the evolve website that's both of those are on that uh, document so we're reaching out to lots and lots of different people and trying to scale up virtual exchange the sorts of activities that that involves well clearly intercultural activities and this is where um, we as linguists have lots and lots of things to contribute um, 
given our experience of intercultural dynamics, we can be active partners in virtual exchange with people from other disciplines. So where internationalization is perhaps about getting um, disciplines in different countries talking to each other, dealing even with the difficult and problematic issues perhaps of redefining uh, histories, perhaps talking uh, about power balances, so some really thorny difficult issues, but mediating that with an intercultural um, aspect here that can be delivered using or partnering with linguists and we're particularly looking for linguists to get involved in these sorts of activities. So here are some models and some examples. Um, so I've been involved in a multi-partner large-scale virtual exchange for some time, it's been called Clavier um, and it very much involves uh, several tutors in my institution also in Clermont-Ferrand and in um, Poland, in Krakow. Um, these sort of multi-partner initiatives enable us to um, design tasks. And I think many of you probably would already be aware of unicollaboration.eu, which was a way of collecting those language, largely language-based tasks and finding out more about how to design for those sort of learning opportunities. There are also grassroots smaller exchanges and what we look to do is to supply the training and the support in order to help people find uh, a route into finding partners. We provide partnering fairs as well to help people find um, other teachers or practitioners who want to get involved within higher education. Um, so there are lots of different formats according to context, according to the scope and according to the number of participants. What we always recommend is that you start small, you try a few things out. The training is important because the, as we've seen already, the technology is just one of the possible things that can go wrong. So we do provide both exchanges and recognition of exchanges through the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange badging system, which I'll show you a little bit more about before we finish, and um, also training to help people start if they've never done it before or to improve and cope with uh, some of the challenges that come our way through virtual exchange. Because nobody's going to pretend to you that this is easy. Um, it isn't, it does take time and it does take the building of a relationship and a trust between partners. Um, so we look at how we can do that. We also provide mentoring and um, of various routes into exploring virtual exchange and how it can internationalize um, your teaching. So these are just some examples. Um, you can see here a, a, a particular topic which is perhaps uh, viewed differently on either side of the Mediterranean perhaps becomes a focus for a virtual exchange to be discussed and some of the thornier issues of that uh, to be appreciated and it's very important that these sort of dialogues are facilitated um, and we have real exports on board we have multiple partners as you'll see through that um, document that I've shared with you, um, including groups such as Salaya and uh, Sharing Perspectives. Um, here's another example, so the creation of interaction and collaboration between students. Perhaps on many of you will be aware of O'Dowd's work on the taxonomy of tasks, perhaps uh, working first on information exchange, but then maybe working towards something that's more complex, such as collaboration and co-creation. Um, so these tend to last as long as they need to last in order to achieve an outcome and as long as they last more than four weeks and the syllabus has been co-designed and uh, worked on together then it's possible for them to form to fall into the Erasmus Plus um, virtual exchange scheme. Uh, so finally you can see we provide training um, 
we call them TEPs, is training to support the implementation of virtual exchange. This tends to be online. You can sign up and uh, join a waiting list to join the courses. Some of you, and there may even be people here who have already competed a TEP or have competed perhaps the recent Evolve training uh, sessions that have just finished. Um, they're online sessions. We have uh, synchronous meetups as well to get used to using this sort of synchronous technologies. And they can be implemented in any discipline, in any subject or any course. Um, so we're, we're totally there as a support network. So the approach that we've taken towards training in virtual exchange is um, essentially a very important um, experiential learning approach. It's, uh, it's not all about theory. It's very much about the practice and the pragmatics of implementing virtual exchange. Um, it is open for anybody in any discipline uh, to get involved. So far, we've awarded over 3,000 badges to um, professors and practitioners around the world who have engaged in these sorts of activities. And um, I will make sure that I show you that. So. What I, what I have found and what I can attest to personally, and I'm sure um, Marion and others who have got involved in this sort of activity will know, is that working collaboratively um, with other people in other countries it can be a hugely transformative experience and generally is both uh, a positive experience and a disruptive experience. Um, and all of us need a bit of a shake up now and again and to look at look at the world through different eyes. Um, it's also one that is very um, is very positive if it's shared with your students. So it's informed by student exchange and student feedback as well. So a collaborative um, piece of work that can actually help us better understand each other and work more effectively together. So I'm just going to move now to share my screen. So don't panic, Alicia. Everything will be fine. OK, I just want to you're going to have a, a little moment here. I'm just going to come back to that document that I've shared and let's have a little look. You can see a couple of people are still in there. And what I shared as well was a Padlet uh, here, let's go to this one, a Padlet here, um, which has lots and lots of information around virtual exchange and some of the connections and some of the literature as well. Um, you can also see, if I come back to this document, you can see here that I've shared with you um, a, a second task. And this is about joining something called a Jamboard. It's um, an open, uh, set of post-it notes basically so let's have a look at this in action so a Jamboard essentially asks you to come down to the T at the bottom left here pick up a sticky note choose your color because that's got to be the most exciting and interesting part about it and type in what sort of barriers do you think there are in enacting or engaging with virtual exchange um, I'm going to add one for you and wait until other people arrive in the document. Click on the link to join the document. Thank you. I can see some anonymous animals joining us. So do choose your post-it note and add a sticky note to the board. There we go. I've put one of mine up and what I'll do is then use the little arrow key so that I can drag that out and move it. Let's just take it. Oh, we've got lines appearing. That's that's people clicking on the pen tool. So you can write if you wish to with the pen tool. But if you click on the T, you get a sticky note, which you can then press enter to post. You can change the color of your pen if you're really into drawing. We have some anonymous animals joining us already. So we've got mink and we've got hyena and frogs and dolphins all arriving in the document. Have a little play. Um, and oh, a camel. Wonderful. That's what we need, a camel. 
this is very much all about how we are also interacting with people in Tunisia, in Morocco, um, and uh, connecting east with west too. So a camel is a great animal to have in here. Choose your post-it from the bottom. So that's come to the bottom uh, little box there. Yay! Uh, that says a, that has a T on it. Great. I can see we've got some more arriving. And bandwidth and access to the internet are absolutely crucial. It couldn't be more important. And um, often we need to think, therefore, about the sorts of uh, sorts of tools we use. And time how could that not be more important and this is where we have uh, a, an important role in terms of actually helping institutions understand the time challenges that are involved and yes lack of support i'm afraid many of us will have experienced it and often it's just lack of understanding so that's why the work uh, that we've had <laughs> the work that we've had uh, going on as well from um, uh, Evolve is really so important because we're working there with stakeholders to help them uh, understand. Um, so interesting to see it's often the logistics really. The other thing that we're looking to establish is just to make sure here <laughs> okay there's a confession great okay that's fine <laughs> um, just to make sure here that um, people understand just what is involved and how complex these things are and therefore how much help we may need to make them effective so I'm just going to take you now to my screen this is my open badge passport feel free to continue to interact with that Jamboard and to use that uh, um, document there to come back and look at the resources and reflect because later on in the day what I will do is then aggregate all that content and pull it together and share it back to you all so you can see what we talked about. Um, I, I mentioned that we are accrediting and we do accredit um, engagement in the training and also student engagement in uh, virtual exchange that is organized by people who have been trained. So you can see here my Open Badge Passport where I've picked up my uh, training. I did a, a tech basic course, which I then became a tutor on. And uh, because I've been doing virtual exchange for a long time, I'm also a mentor on the advanced course and I did the advanced plus course. So that resulted in me having a badge issued, which is by default visible only to me. Um, but then I've made it, as you can see from the world symbol here, publicly available. And if we have a click through on some of these, let's have a look at the TEP basic. You can see um, here the, the criteria upon which that badge is issued. You can share it on social media. You can embed it into your LinkedIn profile. Um, or your um, publicly available perhaps website and you'll also be able to um, connect with others who have these um, accreditations and you'll know that they know how to find their way through some of the confusion and they'll be able to support as well. So Alicia I'm going to stop sharing sorry we'll have a little uh, Doctor Who moment again and come back to my last slide or perhaps my first slide actually um, there we go just to remind everybody of who I am and where I am and if you have any questions feel free to either type in the chat or uh, are you going to I'll unmute your mic if you want to have a go there and well in fact you'll have to switch your mic on just at the bottom of the screen if you do want to speak and ask any questions. Um, one thing I, I failed to mention there and I need to mention and that is that there are paid opportunities to engage um, in the uh, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange project and there's an email which is on that document um, that is very important that enables you to get in touch with us. Right, so this is going to type some questions because people have questions and that's great. So that's lovely. Uh, thanks, thanks very much for uh, for doing that for us, Alicia. That's great. I'm going to have a quick check on our uh, there we go on our uh, back channel as well. 
uh, whilst I'm waiting. There, are, there is a route now to publishing around virtual exchange. And again, that document is up on, uh, on the Google document. The details of that, the Journal of Virtual Exchange um, is available. Right. I, th I think, Alicia, what you're saying is, shut up. I will shut up. <laughs> No, students don't need training. The uh, staff need the training in order to know how to understand um, and how to be the most effective and, and also to benefit from the community. Um, so the training comes that way and then you, from that, you create your virtual exchange and students do have to register if they want to get their Erasmus Plus virtual exchange badge, uh, but that's a simple online document. And uh, one of the things that actually happens as well around that is that certainly with Evolve, um, we have some evidence validated uh, activities. So we are researching into the success of um, virtual exchange. So Evolve stands for evidence validated online learning through virtual exchange. And we're using um, e-portfolios or portfolios uh, to collect feedback from those people who are and have engaged in virtual exchange to analyze um, just what it has done for them and to collect data to share back um, to the wider community. So the benefits for students um, largely depends on which routes to virtual exchange they take. They don't have to take a route that is uh, guided by higher education, if you like. There are lots of routes and that uh, the link to the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Hub shows them those routes. Um, it, it may be that they wish to become a facilitator, for example. Cultural awareness definitely um, on that list and so is employability, making your participation in virtual exchange explicit in order to show that you have cultural understanding and my cultural understanding wouldn't be very good if I carried on over lunch break so um, it looks as though we may have to wind this up but please use the um, yes please do send me any questions uh, but also use that um, email address which is given at the bottom of the document it is info at unicollaboration.org, info at unicollaboration.org. That is where you will find, I'll pop that into here. Uh, that is where you'll find um, answers to your questions as well. Thank you very much and thank you, Alicia. I'm sorry for whatever I've done to your blood pressure today. Um, I know it's hugely frustrating when the technology won't do what you want it to do. Um, but we made it. And thank you all very much for coming and uh, keep in touch. Use that hashtag elearn and add to it hashtag virtual exchange or one word. <laughs>